I'm going to ask MLA Joseph Scow to come to the podium and do the introductions and get us going, please. Good afternoon. I'm Joseph Scow, MLA for Cardston Six Sicca and Deputy Caucus Whip, and I'll be your MC today, and I'm pleased to have that role. I want to thank everyone for joining us today by phone or by linking in remotely. I know that together, by uh, connecting virtually and practicing physical distancing, we can work to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and keep our friends, families, communities safe in this uh, and, and healthy in this time. I'm also pleased to be joining my Government of Alberta colleagues. Specifically uh, today with us is Dave Hansen, MLA for Bonneville Coal Lake St. Paul, Layla Goodridge, MLA for Fort McMurray Lac La Biche, Tani Yao, Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo, Roger Reed, Livingston McLeod, Dan Williams, Peace River, and Nate Horner, MLA for Drumheller Stetler. This announcement comes after extensive consultation with rural physicians on the front line uh, across all of Alberta, including Carson Siksika, and I'm pleased to be here with this announcement and with the Minister today. We will first hear from Tandy Yao, MLA for uh, Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo. As Chairman of the Rural Caucus for Northern Alberta, Tani has close ties with the communities and the leaders and the constituents in the province's northern regions. Tani is also a former firefighter and a paramedic, and I know firsthand that issues of rural health are very important to Tani. Nate Horner will speak next as MLA for Drumheller Stetler and Chairman of the Rural Southern Caucus. And finally, Minister Tyler Shandro will speak in more detail about our government's work to enhance rural health care in Alberta. With that, I turn the podium over to MLA Tani Yao and my other colleagues, after which we'll take questions by phone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to Minister Shandro uh, for inviting me to take part today. As we all know, this is a very difficult time here in Alberta. We're battling both a pandemic and an economic crisis. Things are very difficult for Albertans right now. And uh, I have heard from many physicians, uh, uh, healthcare workers, and residents from uh, Fort McMurray, as well as uh, across the province. And as chair of the Rural Caucus for Northern Alberta, I've also heard from my legislative counterparts about what they're hearing in their uh, communities right across this province. And I want my constituents and all rural, rural Albertans to know that Minister Shandro has heard this loud and clear, and he is going above, above and beyond to listen, uh, to understand, and to make improvements. Especially during these trying times, we need rural health services that are strong and enable our physicians to meet the demands that they face. So I want to thank uh, Mr. Shandro again for listening, caring, and taking action. And with that, I'll thank everyone here, and I'll now pass this over to MLA Nate Horner. Thank you very much, Tani. As MLA for Drumheller Stetler and Chair of the Rural Caucus for Southern Alberta, I'd echo what has been said here and tell you the concerns have also been heard from Southern Albertans in the South. We are facing extraordinary challenges in our province right now, and rural physicians need to know that they are supported and can focus on fighting this pandemic and continuing to serve their communities. Minister Shandro is doing that by listening and taking comprehensive action. He has met with every rural MLA on multiple occasions to get to the heart of the issues and understand rural health care needs. He's been working on a strategy to make improvements for rural physicians, which he'll outline in just a moment. I'm proud and honoured to stand here today with the Minister to endorse his plan for rural Alberta physicians. We're all in this together and we'll get through it by continuing to work together. Nobody understands this kind of resilience like rural Albertans do. Thank you. I'll now give the mic to the Minister of Health. Well, thank you, Nate, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm pleased today to make a major $81 million announcement regarding health care in Alberta. My Rural Caucus colleagues have been meeting with and listening to their constituents over the last few months. They've shared their concerns with me about access to health care and sustaining rural primary care across this province. And what's more, they've brought forward practical and concrete solutions. I'm grateful for their commitment to rural Alberta and for working with me to find solutions. They've already made some key changes, or we've already made some key changes to support physicians and patients 
in the middle of this uh, response to the, the COVID pandemic and going forward, we've uh, allowed physicians to build unlimited virtual visits as one example, and we've canceled all proposed changes to complex modifiers. And now I emphasize, changes to the modifiers are canceled. There's been some misinformation that they were only suspended, so I want to be clear. But we need to do more. And so we're taking action in several key areas. These changes will ensure that rural Albertans have access to safe, high quality care today and during the uh, and unprecedented uh, emergency in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and into the future by supporting rural doctors and strengthening recruitment and retention. First, we will be improving the Rural Remote Northern Program to make it the most generous program of its kind in this country. Now, this program provides financial top-ups to physicians in rural and remote communities. The existing top-ups are in the form right now of a flat amount, plus a variable premium on fees that physicians build for uh, the services they provide patients in this province, depending on how isolated the community is where the, the patient and the, the physician is. Now, the variable component pays anywhere from 6% to 36% on top of the regular fee for a service or a visit, depending on the community uh, and, and where the service is provided in the province. The total amount payable to any physician in this program right now is capped at $60,000 per year. This cap is going to be uh, lifted immediately, and this will be a material benefit for rural physicians. And I want to provide some examples of the, the benefit this is going to provide to these physicians and their, their, uh, their clinics. For example, an average physician in Fort McMurray, currently billing $433,000 per year, will be able to claim an additional, right now, 26, uh, sorry, with the, the cap being removed, will be able to claim an additional $26,500. So the total for them, for the Rural Remote Northern Program, that they would be able to claim would be increase to $86,500. In Sundry, the same physician would claim $51,000, and in Lac La Biche, it would be an amount of 92,662. Now this change means that effective immediately, Alberta will have the best incentive program for rural physicians in the country. Funding for this program will now be in excess of $57 million. Earlier this year, I announced changes to how we pay for overhead when physicians work in hospitals. Our intent was to ensure that physicians were paid for the costs of running their offices when they work in them, not in hospitals where taxpayers already pay for the overhead costs. Now, I've heard from my colleagues, from rural physicians, as well as from rural leaders all across the province, that this policy forces physicians and hospitals to make choices which reduce access, and this was never our intention. Many rural physicians organize their business model around practicing in hospitals and clinics. And rural hospitals, especially their emergency departments, work differently than in cities. They depend on rural physicians for coverage and we need to maintain that coverage in Alberta. Rural physicians will be exempted from the overhead policy that took effect on March 31st. The rates they they charge for working in a hospital will remain at the same levels as they did in 2019-2020. Further, I'm pausing the implementation of the policy for urban physicians as well until AHS completes a review of this policy. Another issue we are addressing today is the medical liability insurance. Now we subsidize as taxpayers the rates that physicians pay for their insurance. And over the past few months, we've been consulting with them on how to allocate this funding and set new rates. Our intent was to bring us in line with BC, but many physicians were led to believe by the AMA that we were going to stop subsidizing their insurance. And that caused needless confusion and anxiety, particularly as physicians are trying to respond to the pandemic. I'm pleased to announce today our final decision on funding for physicians insurance. We're holding the reimbursement program deductible at the current rate of $1,000 for all rural physicians, as well as for all family physicians in Alberta. The deductible is the amount that the physician pays. The government will pay the rest. Now, this is important for all physicians, but especially for rural ones, because some of them do small numbers of, for example, if they do um, any obstetrics, they may do a small number of deliveries per year, and the insurance premium for obstetrics can be disproportionate as a burden. 
keeping the amount for that rural doctors pay at $1,000 per year will help maintain access to labour and delivery in our rural hospitals. We'll also be assuming responsibility for administering the program. This allows us to ensure that we spend more on physicians and less on administration. Another issue is on-call rates. Our 84 rural hospitals rely on rural family physicians to provide coverage. Alberta Health Services pays an hourly rate for physicians to be on-call outside their regular shifts. Last year, a committee called the Physician Compensation Committee, which was in the previous master agreement with the AMA, approved reductions to those rates and asked AHS to complete a review of the program. The initial phase of the consultation is complete. The review recommended increasing the rates for rural family doctors who have additional training in obstetrics and anesthesia. Um, uh, and for the, I have difficulty pronouncing that word, so the anesthesiologists. Uh, On-call rates for all rural physicians will range from $20 per hour to $23 per hour, increasing payments to more than 1,500 physicians who are on call in rural Alberta. AHS will continue to work with physicians to review the remaining rates and bring forward recommendations on what other changes may be needed. This announcement increases the funding for the program by $7 million. We'll also be paying for the schooling of 20 medical students over the next three years to attract more young Albertans from rural communities into medical school. The students' education will be paid for in exchange for them working in a rural community for three years. The final component of our rural strategy will be engaging physicians on how to improve health care in rural communities. We've contracted internationally recognized clinical researcher Dr. Lee Green to help with this, uh, with this work until the end of July. Dr. Green will provide advice on how to modernize alternative compensation models for community-based primary care. We're honored to have Dr. Green on board as a practicing physician and a professor and chair in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Alberta. He'll engage physicians and help us use alternative funding approaches to improve primary health care in Alberta. One of the first models I'll be seeking Dr. Green's advice on is a new salary model for primary care physicians. Alberta is the only province that doesn't have a salary model for physicians. These models provide stability and respond to the changing needs of physicians, especially those in rural Alberta. Physicians across Canada have been advocating for pensions and other benefits and greater stability in their income. Many physicians prefer to focus on, the, uh, on, on their practice and uh, the care side of their business and to leave the operation to others, as a salary model is one way to uh, help them be able to do that. The Provincial Primary Care Network Committee will also establish a working group to provide me with recommendations on how to stabilize and improve primary care in rural communities. The working group will include physicians, and will provide me with its recommendations by October 1st of this year. Now in conclusion, I want to assure rural Albertans and rural physicians that our government is committed to supporting you during the response to the COVID uh, pandemic and going forward. I also want to thank all the physicians and healthcare providers throughout the entire province who are on the front lines battling COVID-19 on a daily basis. They are true heroes doing exemplary work and I speak on behalf of all Albertans when I say thank you so very much for everything you're doing during the crisis. I'd now uh, be happy to take any questions uh, that anyone might have for me. So thanks, Minister, and thanks to all the MLAs. Uh, before we go to the phone line for questions, I'll just point out that we have a senior uh, resource person in the room from the department to answer questions as appropriate. That's Leanne Wagner, an assistant deputy minister from, from the department. Uh, and of course, as always, follow up with me uh, if there are questions we don't get to or can't answer right here. So with that, uh, Operator, the first question, please. First is Dean Bennett with the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Dean. Thanks. Uh, Minister Shandro, I hope you can clear this up for me because, well, to be frank, I, it's not clear to me anymore where we're going on this file. Uh, two months ago, you cancelled the master agreement and you brought in changes to reduce future hikes to doctor compensation, like about, about $2 billion, I think, even though doctors warned you at the time that could cause them to leave a reduced scope of practice. Now that's happening, and in response, you're putting in billions or millions of dollars in supplementary aid, and you're rolling back on these changes to stop it. 
But in doing so, you are in effect returning funds or pumping millions into doctor compensation at the same time your long-term policy commitment is to rein in doctor compensation. I don't understand the dichotomy. And given that dichotomy, why should doctors believe that this announcement or any similar future announcement isn't just a stopgap promise that will be repealed with the stroke of a pen once this pandemic crisis lifts? Well, thanks, Dean. I, I would say this, uh, first of all, that um, um, the master agreement with the AMA is, would uh, have precisely been able to uh, prohibit us from being able to move quickly and to be able to work with our, our rural physicians and rural Albertans to be able to work on an action plan like this, to be able to respond to the concerns that uh, rural physicians and, and rural Albertans have had since I've come into this role. Um, these are, are issues that uh, commenced before I was in this role. Uh, we heard this uh, since, uh, well, for the last year, since last May, when we've uh, met with rural Albertans. Um, so when we um, uh, executed the, the negotiated termination clause and the, the AMA agreement, it was precisely so that we could uh, take measures like this to be able to respond uh, to uh, certain specialties who uh, felt pressures and uh, to, to be able to work with um, Albertans to make sure that they have the care that they need throughout the province. Thanks, Dean. Uh, we'll try to keep questions to a single question and a short follow-up. Dean, a follow-up, or can we move on to the next one? Okay, operator, next question, please. Next is Janet French with CBC Edmonton. Go ahead, Janet. Hi there. Thanks for taking my question. Um, so, but the changes you've just announced, you're saying they're just specific to rural physicians. So, first of all, I'm curious, how do you define a rural physician? And does this not create two tiers or multiple tiers of classifications of doctor, depending on where they work? Well, we're, we uh, right now already have definitions for, for what is r rural, uh, just uh, in itself in the rural remote northern program. So right now we have a, a bunch of points that are calculated depending on how far uh, physicians and their patients are from a, a major center um, and, and as well as um, depending on how far north they are in the province. So it, it depends on population size for a community, it depends on how far they are from a major center, um, and it depends on how far north they are in the province as well. And, and this isn't, um, I, I would say this, th this is us acknowledging that we have differences in how primary care is uh, accessible in this province. And uh, as I said before, that um, since we've come into the role, rural Albertans have spoken to us about the concerns that they have about access to primary care in their communities. And uh, over the last year, for the, the physicians and the, the constituents who have met with my rural caucus, have met with me, and for my rural caucus colleagues to be able to come to me and uh, bring those concerns forward. Um, look, I, and I'll admit this too, it, it, these aren't, um, aren't solutions that were, that were easy to, for us to develop. Um, these these uh, did take uh, time for us to be able to develop these, uh, these, this action plan to be able to respond to rural Albertans and these rural physicians and uh, very grateful for the, uh, the feedback um, and the, the advocacy of my rural caucus members after they met with their physicians, they met with the rural leaders, they met with their constituents and came to, uh, to us with practical solutions. Um, and I, I think that's actually the, the most impressive part about my rural colleagues that they actually came to us with uh, solutions like the ones that we're announcing today. Thanks. Next. Sorry, next is Licia Corbello with the Calgary Herald. Go ahead, Licia. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, this is a question for Minister Shandro. Um, Minister Shandro. Sorry, Licia, it looks like you dropped there. Um, can I have you to signal again to join the uh, queue one more time and we'll put you back through? Hello? Oh, we can sorry, hear you please. again. Can you hear me? We can now again, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. So the question is, uh, Minister Shandra, why did you have to be told by your rural caucus colleagues that your changes to how physicians were funded who worked in hospital and had a clinic, that this would have unintended consequences. When this was being told to you by the AMA during negotiations. So I guess that's one of the questions. The other one is, are you going to sit down now with the AMA and negotiate with them for the entire uh, contract with physicians? 
and um, and nip this uh, lawsuit by the AMA in the bud. Sure. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, so first I point out that there is no contract with physicians. Physicians, uh, through legislation, are entitled to bill government for the patient services that they provide every patient in this province. So the schedule of medical benefits provides a, a schedule of rates. And when they provide a service to patients, according to that schedule, they bill us and we pay it no matter what. So there is no contract with our physicians. There was a, a master agreement with the AMA. That master agreement uh, provided them with a, a veto. And, and I'd say this uh, as well. I, I point out that, uh, and if folks remember, when we started negotiations with the AMA in November this year, uh, we also had a consultation proposal as well. Many of the uh, initiatives that we're talking about today um, were, were consultation proposals. Um, and uh, so when, when negotiations with the AMA were not successful, uh, the AMA asked us to bring the consultation proposals uh, to, the, uh, to a mediation table, and we agreed. Uh, but then we were surprised to find out the AMA did not want to talk about those consultation proposals with us at mediation. So the, the AMA, um, uh, to the extent uh, that uh, they have a, a future proposal for us on, on a, a, another, if they wanted a, another master agreement with us, as I've said before, and I, I've said this since we, we launched on February 20th, the, the new physician funding framework, um, I, I've said continuously, if the AMA um, has a, a proposal for a new master agreement, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to be able to see what their proposal might be. I've instructed the ministry to review any proposal that we might receive from the AMA. And, and as well, um, after the physician funding framework was launched uh, in, in, uh, on February 20th, uh, the AMA, at their request, we, we struck a working group with them. They had some folks that they pointed to the working group. We had some folks. They sat down for two days to try and, again, work through some issues. Um, again, those, those, um, those conversations that we had with the AMA did not talk about these specific issues. They did not talk about rural Alberta, did not talk about the access to primary care for rural Albertans. Um, this uh, entire um, process and this action plan that we're announcing today came through uh, our office and, and my rural colleagues from talking with uh, rural Albertans, their constituents and their, their physicians, the rural leaders, to be able to come up with concrete solutions uh, because we, we were in a bit of a vacuum and did not get that feedback from the AMA. Operator, next question. Next is Lisa Johnson with the Edmonton Journal. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, I'm wondering, Minister, where did the ministry go wrong with these changes in the first place? I mean, did the ministry not have a clear understanding of what these changes would do to rural doctors? Um, and ultimately, who's responsible for that? And I would also amend that with, how or why should doctors, I guess, trust that this provincial primary care network committee will bring their concerns forward um, instead of relying on the AMA to advocate for them in negotiations, which is what they keep asking for? Sure. Well, well thank you. Uh, first, I, I point out, that, so these, um, these initiatives were initiatives that we brought forward through the consultation process. Uh, a consultation process which uh, was not um, conductive with the AMA. Um, I don't believe that they, they went wrong. I, I believe very strongly that um, our purpose was to be able to make sure that um, by not having a master agreement with the AMA that allowed us to be able to, to work in a more expeditious manner, to be able to hear from, from rural uh, Albertans and rural physicians, to be able to, to hear from them and, uh, and work on an action plan that uh, increased access for primary care uh, in their communities. Um, and so I, I point out, first of all, that the, the Rural Remote Northern Program, uh, the, the intention was always to in increase the amount that we paid for the variable fee. Um, the, the, the flat fee, um, uh, we, we thought uh, was, uh, was uh, for, for us to be able to take the, the flat fee and, and actually increase the entire uh, program to be able to make it the most generous of its kind in this country, um, I don't think is going wrong, quite frankly. Um, the, the part where we did hear back from, from uh, physicians was about the, uh, the overhead in ERs. And um, uh, uh, so we, we heard that in a, very recently from, from, our, uh, from our caucus colleagues as they consulted with their constituents, as they met with us. And, uh, and, and for those rural physicians and uh, 
rural, um, uh, rural leaders and, and the constituents of my rural caucus members to be able to come to us with practical solutions on what we could do um, regarding the, the ER overhead for us to be able to make sure that it's going to support those physicians in their communities. And so that we're very happy then to be able to get that feedback and take those practical solutions that my colleagues brought to me uh, to be able to make sure that we have an action plan that uh, serves those uh, communities. Thanks. I, I think we have three questions waiting on the line right now, so we'll take those three and then wrap it up. So, operator, next one. Kim Brooke with CTV News. Go ahead, Kim. Hello. Hi, Brooke. Sorry about that. Can you guys? Yep. We got me. Uh, perfect. First of all, I just uh, want you to really kind of spell this out for us. You, you did go pretty quickly there. Can you tell us exactly what changes we are pausing that took effect? Uh, on April 1st, and uh, what what of those, uh, well, what, what are we pausing exactly, and what's that going to do uh, for this budget? I mean, you talk about savings so much, uh, and the savings that were being found through these changes. So what happens now? Sure. Well, what, what's been paused is, so this is an action plan that has, I think, six different parts to it. Um, uh, the, the one part that is pausing something, though, is um, a previously announced um, uh, initiative to, uh, to change the, the amounts that are paid uh, for a physician to provide care in an AHS facility, uh, both in rural and um, urban physicians. Uh, we're making it very clear um, that uh, we are not going to change the amounts that a rural physician is, uh, is paid when they provide care in, uh, in an emergency room, in a hospital, um, or, or in an AHS facility. Um, and then what uh, is also being paused is for AHS to do a review of the, the overhead policy that they, they have for their physicians, the urban physicians, that is. And so that's the one part that's been paused. But the, um, the, the action plan as a whole is, is for us to make it clear because the, the AMA had provided incorrect uh, information to its uh, members regarding um, how much government will be paying physicians for their, um, for their um, insurance liability and making sure that, especially for our rural physicians um, who had a misunderstanding from the AMA, and we're making it very clear for them and for family physicians throughout the province that their deductible is going to stay at $1,000. And then as well for us just to make it very clear that uh, the other changes that we're making are to remove the cap on the variable fee for the rural and remote northern program that we're going to take another of other initiatives for us to to be able to increase um, our ability to retain and recruit physicians in rural Alberta such as buying uh, spaces in our medical school to be able to uh, provide those spots to rural um, Albertans to be able to then return to their communities and serve um, serve patients in those communities. So that's the overview. And uh, but the only part that there was uh, pausing something was the uh, regarding the the overhead uh, policy we had initially announced. Does that answer your question, Brooks? Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we're on the same page. My, my next question is this. Um, how, how confident are you that the relationship with AMA is one uh, that, that's going to be built up over time? I mean, you, you mentioned wanting to get on the same page with them, but you also, you know, take some, take some pot shots at them. You say a lot of these ideas are coming from other sources and not the AMA, and the AMA would argue that a lot of the changes being announced today are ones that they approached you with earlier. So how confident are you in this relationship moving forward? Uh, well, I, I reiterate again that um, uh, these, these were not um, uh, proposed by the AMA. Um, and indeed, um, I think the misinformation they provided their members regarding the insurance deductibles was uh, um, clearly incorrect and, and unhelpful. And so part of the reason why we want to make sure in this action plan that we make it very clear to those physicians uh, that there was, is not going to be a change. Uh, so very happy to provide that clarification. And, and look, as I said on, on February 20th, when we announced the new physician funding framework, um, and I've said ever since that we're, um, I, I continue to meet with the AMA on a, uh, a formal and informal basis. Um, I think it was just before Easter, I, I met with over three hours with uh, Dr. Molnar, the president of the AMA. Um, we, we spoke to the AMA again this morning. I think the uh, staff at the ministry speak to, to the AMA on uh, almost a daily basis to be able to continue to speak to them and get their feedback. Um, and, you know, as, as I said even earlier uh, this afternoon, 
the AMA if they, they ever have a, a proposal for us, and they often do. Like I, I think uh, the AMA did uh, bring forward to us um, at the beginning of the pandemic uh, their concerns regarding uh, physicians serving in their clinics and uh, approached us on the virtual codes. Um, and so we, we do continue to receive information and feedback from the AMA. Uh, if the AMA has uh, you know, proposal for us on, on a future master agreement with them, as I said, uh, they're, they're entitled to do so. I've, I'm happy to and would look forward to receiving any proposal. And I've instructed the ministry to make sure that they review uh, any such proposal. Thanks. Operator, next one. Next is Adam Toy with Global News. Go ahead, Adam. Thanks for taking my question. Um, all of these announcements today seem to uh, not make uh, not, not give up any, any ground in the ARP versus fee for service uh, negotiation. It seems like you want to continue to incentivize ARPs and disincentivize uh, fee for service. Why is that? Well, I, I don't think in, in rural Alberta we're disincentivizing uh, fee for service at all. I think what we're saying with um, uh, with our physicians uh, to, in rural Alberta, especially, that uh, um, uh, our, our number one concern is making sure that that rural Albertans have access to primary care. Um, we're we're in lifting the cap on the rural remote northern program, so this is a premium amount that uh, physicians receive as a top up, on top of the the fee for service that they charge. So they provide a service to a patient. Um, and we're providing a premium on top of each of those services. Um, and so uh, that is going to continue to support the fee-for-service option. We're going to continue to have conversations. And, and as I said at the end, we want to provide, I, look, I, especially with, uh, with our, our response to the pandemic, a lot of physicians um, may have concerns about reduced uh, numbers of, of, of patients in their clinics or as they're providing services to their patients uh, through a, a virtual code. Um, uh, to provide alternative models to, to those rural physicians or physicians uh, elsewhere in the province through an ARP or a salary model, I think, makes sure that we provide different opportunities for physicians to make sure that they have a, a predictable and stable opportunity. And, and as well, as has been pointed out to me um, by, by uh, rural physicians, that we have a declining population in rural Alberta. That means uh, declining numbers of, of patients on a physician's uh, patient roster. Um, but their overhead isn't decreasing. So for us to be able to make sure that we provide different options to, to physicians who may want to have more predictability and more stability, and especially for, for physicians uh, who graduate from medical school, and uh, for them when they decide where they, they want to take a risk and, and set up uh, their business, for us to make sure that we will in the future have an opportunity to, to have a a clear um, and uh, understandable, um, uh, it, whether it's an ARP or salary model for those physicians to have available to them so they know that they can serve rural Albertans in those communities. Thanks, operator. We'll take the last question. Last question is Michelle Bel uh, Belfontaine with CBC. Go ahead, Michelle. Uh, hi, Minister. Um, this um, dispute has uh, really created a lot of uh, anxiety among rural Albertans who worry about losing health care, um, particularly during a pandemic, and also uh, anxiety among doctors who are having to deal with this extra layer of anxiety during this pandemic. What responsibility do you as minister take for this? Well, first, Michelle, I point out a lot of the anxiety uh, came from misinformation. Um, we, we very, before the, the physician funding framework on, on February 20th, and until we canceled um, our proposed changes to the, the first, the minute 15 uh, complex modifier, um, that was the number one thing we, we heard information about. Um, and so, especially um, in the middle of the pandemic, we wanted to make sure we, we provided um, clear direction to our physicians across the, the province that we were canceling those proposed changes. Um, a lot of the anxiety since uh, that time and during the pandemic response has uh, been a result of misinformation that those physicians and uh, rural communities received uh, from the AMA, in particular about the, the changes to their, their insurance deductible. 
So a lot of physicians had that anxiety because they uh, misunderstood that, uh, that they thought that they were going to have significant and severe increases in their deductible. Um, that was never our decision. Um, we were uh, in the middle of um, consulting with the AMA uh, to, to be able to, to develop what changes might happen to those deductibles. Um, we've now made the decisions and making it very clear for those physicians so they can understand where we stand on their deductible, that it will be staying the same in rural Alberta. And so going forward, we're making sure that rural physicians and rural Albertans know that uh, we have an action plan to be able to not only address um, during the pandemic uh, and the, for the COVID-19 pandemic and supporting them and the, the care they can provide patients in rural Alberta, but making sure going forward that we understand that this is a, a problem that we have inherited as a government, the access that rural Albertans have to primary care, and uh, we, that we have an action plan to be able to make sure that those physicians have the ability to stay in those communities, they can be retained, they can be recruited to those communities, and we can make sure that rural Albertans have access to primary care in those communities. So you, it sounds like you're blaming the AMA for this. Look, Michelle, um, I... I, I, um, I think I've, I've made it clear that uh, there are some things that I, I've been disappointed about uh, with the AMA, and it, it stems from, from even from when we started negotiations in, in November. Um, I think it's part of the reason why um, our negotiations and consultations from November to, to January were, were not successful. Um, and one of the reasons why we proceeded with the new physician funding framework on February 20th um, but uh, look, I, I, as I said before, uh, happy to be able to make sure that we continue to get uh, feedback and uh, proposals from the AMA. And uh, any time that they have a proposal for us on a future master agreement, um, I've instructed uh, the ministry to review it. And I, I look forward to any uh, opportunity the AMA might have to, uh, to any future proposal that they might uh, be able to submit to us on a, a future master agreement with them. Thanks, Michelle, and, and thanks, Minister. With that, I'll wrap it up. And a reminder, I know there's lots of detail. Uh, reporters, if we didn't get to you or if you need follow-up, please let me know. So thanks, Minister, and, and we'll wrap up for now. Thank you.